This is Arkies in the Beltway, a look at national politics and the Arkansans influencing the discussions. I'm Alex Thomas, Washington correspondent for the Arkansas Democrat Gazette, reporting from the nation's capital. Thank you for joining us for this episode of Arkies in the Beltway for the week of April 14th, 2024. Visitors to the U.S. Capitol will quickly notice the plethora of statues that line the walls of the legislative building. Every state is allowed to contribute to statues to the National Statuary Hall collection, recognizing figures throughout American history. At the moment, there are two empty spaces where Arkansas's former statues once stood. The Democrat Gazette confirming crews removed the statues of Uriah Rose and James Paul Clark on April 5th. The move made in advance of installing two new statues of Arkansas icons, those of civil rights leader Daisy Bates and musician Johnny Cash. The statues of Rose and Clark had been in the Capitol since 1917 and 1921, respectively. Rose, the founder of the American Bar Association and a Confederate sympathizer, Clark served as Arkansas's governor and in the U.S. Senate. He also supported white supremacy. Arkansas leaders agreed to remove both statues in 2019 and replace them with Bates and Cash. Bates, an advisor to the Little Rock Nine and a civil rights advocate, Cash, the Kingsland native who became an international music icon. Regarding when the new statues will be installed at the Capitol, the Bates statue will be first. It will be placed at the former location of the Rose statue in National Statuary Hall, next to one of Mississippi statues, Confederate President Jefferson Davis. A ceremony is scheduled for May 8th. Officials have yet to announce an official date for the Cash statue unveiling, but they are considering some time in September. As for the Rose and Clark statues, crews place these figures in storage ahead of being shipped back to Arkansas. Future locations for both statues have yet to be finalized, a main concern, finding places able to handle the weight of these statues, both of which are made of marble. Congress back in action, the Senate and House of Representatives returning to Capitol Hill after a two-week recess, the House passing multiple bills upon resuming legislative business, including a bipartisan measure addressing outdoor recreation. The Explore Act combines multiple proposals on recreational opportunities. Its provisions include actions for incentivizing the creation of long-distance bike trails, fostering private-public partnerships, and increasing accessibility to facilities. Representative Bruce Westerman of Hot Springs and a bipartisan group of House colleagues introduced the measure back in November. The House Natural Resources Committee, which Westerman leads, approved the Explore Act back in January. The Arkansan champion language in the package to study overnight camping opportunities in the Watchtown National Forest, specifically as it relates to the Albert Pike Recreation Area. Camping has been prohibited around this location following fatal flooding in 2010. If the Explorer Act becomes law, the Department of Agriculture would have to identify 54 areas suitable for overnight camping with plans to open at least 27 campsites and related facilities within two years. These campsites would need to be located outside of spaces prone to 100-year floods. Westerman says he wants people to be safe outdoors, which requires some individual responsibility. If we close down everything because of injury or death, you know, the Grand Canyon would be closed off. You, you would close off hiking trails and rock climbing, but our outdoors are there for us to access. The Senate Energy and Natural Resources Committee, the counterpart to Westerman's committee, has considered multiple bills on outdoor recreation during this Congress. Westerman telling the Democrat Gazette there are talks about how the Senate will move forward with the Explore Act, adding he's optimistic Congress's upper chamber will pass the measure. The Farm Bill remains a hot topic. Republicans on the Senate Agriculture, Nutrition, and Forestry Committee introducing a bill to update federal crop insurance coverage. The Farmer Act would increase insurance premium support for high levels of coverage as well as change the county-level supplemental coverage option. The timing of the bill's announcement amid ongoing discussions about the next Farm Bill, which authorizes programs addressing crop insurance and agriculture, as well as nutrition and rural development. North Dakota Senator John Hoven is the lead sponsor of the Farmer Act. To get this Farm Bill passed, we need more farm in the Farm Bill. What does that mean? That means we've got enhanced crop insurance, which is exactly what this bill does, And we have to strengthen the countercyclical safety net. The nonpartisan Congressional Budget Office estimates the next farm bill will have a baseline of $1.4 trillion over the next decade, with 82% of this projected spending involving nutrition assistance programs. Spending on crop insurance is estimated to account for 9% of the total projection. Mississippi Senator Cindy Hyde-Smith. We have to have 
this bill. We have to have what we call the insurance, the safety nets, to make sure that everybody can continue to successfully farm. Congress was supposed to pass a new farm bill last fall, but agriculture leaders agreed to extend the standing 2018 law through this September amid disagreements on spending in the typically bipartisan package. Democrats have warned Republican colleagues about actions in the next farm bill affecting nutrition and conservation-related spending. Senator John Bozeman of Rogers serves as the top Republican on the Senate Agriculture Committee. He backs the Farmer Act, but recognizes how long it is taking to put together a new farm bill. I was hoping that at this point in the year we would be able to be talking about uh, having a, a farm bill completed. The good news is everybody's working in good faith to try and get that done. Republicans plan to unveil their frameworks for the next farm bill this month. According to Bozeman, Republicans on the House Agriculture Committee will likely publish their plan first. Representative French Hill of Little Rock applauding Japan's Prime Minister following the latter's recent address before Congress. Prime Minister Fumio Kishida spoke before a joint meeting of Congress last Thursday, during which he described the United States' role in international affairs as indispensable. He additionally emphasized the importance of initiative from America's allies. I'm not saying this out of my strong attachment to America. I'm an uh, idealist, but a real, realist too. The defense of freedom, democracy, and the rule of law is the national interest of Japan. Hill was part of the Congressional Escort Committee that ushered Kishida into the House chamber for the address. Some of Hill's policy work concentrates on the United States' relationships with its Asia-Pacific allies, as exhibited with trips last year with colleagues to Japan, South Korea, and Taiwan. The congressman from Little Rock says America's leaders have consistently asked for European and Asian partners to do more to confront international issues. In my view, the Prime Minister's speech actually... Uh was the fruit of all that labor that Japan recognizes uh, America's pivotal, he said, indispensable leadership, but uh, that we can't do it alone in today's big, complicated world, and we shouldn't have to. Kishida's address part of a state trip to the United States, which also included a trilateral summit between leaders of the U.S., Japan, and the Philippines. Possibly the biggest story of last week among Arkansans did not happen in the nation's capital, but instead Fayetteville. The University of Arkansas naming John Calipari as the head coach of the men's basketball team. Calipari leaving the University of Kentucky after 15 seasons. That move follows Eric Musselman's decision to leave Arkansas for Southern California. Senator Bozeman and Representative Westerman played on the Razorbacks football team, both lawmakers excited to see Calipari in red. When I was at the University of Arkansas, Coach Brawls used to talk about past performance is indicative of the future. And this is a guy that, that by all accounts has done a tremendous job, one of the great basketball coaches in America. And uh, the idea that he you know, wants to come to Arkansas, he realizes the potential of our, of our program. All of that, I think, is really positive. You know, even when Arkansas was, was playing Kentucky and he was coaching them, and as, you know, as hard as you cheer for Arkansas to win, you still had to respect him for the job that he did. And he, I always thought he was pretty classy, even when he got thrown out of the game in Fayetteville, and they came back and beat us without him. Representative Steve Womack of Rogers actually knows Calipari, the congressman whose district includes Fayetteville, first met Calipari on Capitol Hill. A long time ago, Hal Rogers, who I sit with on the floor, invited me into a meeting in his hideaway off the floor and said, you need to come in here. I got somebody I want you to meet. And it was Cal Perry. Of course, I recognized him immediately. And, and ever since then, whenever Cal comes to the Capitol, he goes to see Hal Rogers and I get invited. Womack and Calipari's relationship has grown with time. Womack recalls one recent moment amid regular season Southeastern Conference play. Cal sent me a text the day before they traveled to Arkansas for their game, and it said, tomorrow night around 8 o'clock, we're going to do our shoot around at Bud Walton Arena. This is a Friday night. I want you to come, and I want you to bring your dad because he had been interviewed 
before on the radio by my father. The congressman and his dad, broadcaster Kermit Womack, attended that shoot around with the elder Womack getting a face-to-face -face interview with Calipari. This is what Razorback fans are going to find out, aside from all of his athletic accomplishments, his coaching, his recruiting, all of those things, his ability to raise money, and et cetera. But he is one of the most personable people you will ever meet. As if it wasn't obvious, Representative Womack is excited to see Calipari leading the Hogs. This particular matchup, uh, John Calipari and Arkansas basketball, was uh, there's got to be some divinity involved in this. I am thrilled beyond words. Calipari, appreciative of his time at the University of Kentucky, noting in a video last Tuesday that it's time for a new voice to lead that team. And that'll do it for this edition of Arkies in the Beltway for the week of April 14th, 2024. You can stay up to date with all news involving Arkansas from the U.S. Capitol to Bud Walton Arena at ArkansasOnline.com. You can get in touch with me on social media. My handle is at Alex House Thomas. Special thanks to the team down in Little Rock. I'm Alex Thomas, and this has been Arkies in the Beltway. Thanks for listening.